for Wi-Fi today. Uh, so starting this recording so people who aren't here or if you want to go back and watch this yourselves later, you can. Um, so let's look at what's happening on this slide six here. Kai's strategy is using a table to solve the previous challenge, which is not a strategy I used at all. Um, let me know in the chat if you did use a table to solve any of these previous screens. Okay, I'm seeing some no's. Yeah, it's not a strategy I think of. I think to start multiplying and dividing. Uh, but what I see Kai doing here that I think is really smart is using this table as an input and an output. So here's my X, here's my Y. And in the middle, something is happening. There's a change that's happening. And I think what we all were doing with our different strategies is finding out what that change was. And what's really smart about Kai's method of using a table is that Kai can keep track of what are the changes. This is a really clear example right here where Kai found something that we can check and it works both ways. If I take 120 and I divide it by the, by the 100, I'm going to get 1.2. And if I do 100 times that 1.2, I get 120. That makes this our constant of proportionality. And if you remember from our previous unit on proportions, whatever is happening with the X to get the Y in one is true for the others. So then my question would be if it's times I'm going to put a, a thing there for a times instead, a little dot. If it's times 1.2, what's going on here? Is that the right number? And I'm not seeing too many people in the the uh, what you guys noticed as calling that out. And I think it's because we weren't using tables. But if you try 28.8 times 1.2, if I take this and I multiply it by this constant, I don't get 36. I get 34.56. If I take this 36, oops, I entered the wrong number in my calculator. When I check these two, I don't get 1.2, I get 1.25 if I divide this by this. And I'm just thinking at that point eight, for some reason, Kai was thinking that the difference between those would equal two. I'm not really sure. But a table is a really great way. That's one great strategy to keep track of uh, what's happening with your numbers. Before we go on from this, I want to share how I solved some of the others using a proportion. So if you want to go back to, see, I'm looking at my other screen. If you want to go back to slide four, where it says 60 went into this machine and 72 came out. What percent increase did this machine use? I set this up as a proportion. And I used, I don't know what the percent is over 100, but I know that the original number was 60 and the new number was 72.
And then I cross multiplied 72 times 100. And 60 times X. And I got 7200 equals 60 X. And I found that I got 120 over 100. That means that it is 20% more. So the answer would be 20%. What are some other ways people solved this problem? I'm just showing you my favorite method. You all have different ways. Like I said, keep track of your strategies. I like to use cross multiplying. It makes sense to me. I'm sharing it with you, but it's not the only way. Like I said, I think Kai's table was, table was a really good way to do it too. How did other people solve this same problem I just looked at? 60 went into the machine and 72 came out. Because when I look at it, the percent increase, I see almost all of you with 20 as your percent. How did you find that 20? I was hoping to see some sharing in chat. So I'll give it another minute. Hey, then let's get back to looking at the Desmos together. Oh, now we get some shares. There we go. 72. Oh, that's another way, Hector. Okay, I'm going to go back to sharing my iPad because I think that's a really smart way to do it. Okay, so in the chat, to me, Hector showed 72 minus 60 equals 12. 60 divided by 12 equals five. A visual way to show what Hector's showing there is if this is 60, then each of these sections is 12. And each of those would be one fifth. And then he's showing me that he did 100 divided by five equals 20. And I'm showing it visually here that if this is the percent part, while this is the fraction part of this model, that it takes five twenties to get to 100%. Oh, Prehensha said that she cross multiplied two, but she put 72 as the denominator. And Prehensha, what I'm gonna uh, tell you about why I didn't do that is that the 100 in the percent part of this is the whole, and the 60 was the original whole. And because this was a percent increase, we saw this number 120 was bigger than the original 100, just like the 72 is bigger than the original 60. Does that make sense?
Okay. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show you. Let me get back to sharing one more thing before I stop recording. I don't see it sharing it. You all let me know in the chat if you can see the Desmos on my screen. Didn't seem to be sharing it correctly. So let me try that. Okay, um, I am going to open up this Desmo so that you can finish all the rest of it. The pacing is off. On the next screen where I see some of you already jumping, you are going to make a challenge. Once you've made your challenge, I would like you to do three of your classmates at least, but you can do more. You're going to make your own machine. So follow these steps 